football in space, a concept that's both fascinating and mind-boggling, a fusion of our beloved terrestrial sport with the ethereal wonders of the cosmos. Today we take a leap of faith, a leap into the unknown, as we traverse the interstellar void to explore the mysteries of football in the most unlikely of places, Mars. The red planet Mars with its crimson landscapes and vast barren expanses has always held a certain allure for mankind. But as we stand on the precipice of a new era, an era of interplanetary exploration, we must ask ourselves, what would become of our beloved sport on Mars? Imagine a football match, not on the lush green pitches of Earth, but on the cold, red soil of Mars. How would football be played on a planet with less gravity, thin atmosphere and extreme temperatures? Today, we delve into this intriguing question, so strap in and let's kick off this interstellar journey. Mars has only 38% of Earth's gravity, which means players can jump higher and run faster than ever before. Picture this, a player leaps into the air for a header, soaring higher and staying longer in the air than they ever could on Earth. The low gravity of Mars would change our perception of the game, creating a version of football that's more thrilling, more exciting and more spectacular than we've ever seen. Now, what about the ball? The lower gravity would affect its trajectory too. On Mars, the ball would travel further and faster, transforming what we know as a simple pass into a long, soaring arc across the Martian sky. Goals might be scored from incredible distances, changing the dynamics of the game and the strategies employed by the players. But it's not just about the long shots and high jumps. The reduced gravity would also affect the player's physical exertion and stamina. With less gravity pulling them down, players could run faster and longer, transforming the game into an even more intense and fast-paced spectacle. However, these changes also bring challenges. Players would need to adapt to these new conditions, adjusting their techniques to account for the change ball trajectory and their enhanced physical capabilities. Coaches would need to develop new strategies, factoring in the extended playing field and the altered physics. And then there's the matter of safety. The reduced gravity might increase the risk of injury with players potentially colliding mid-air or landing awkwardly from their high jumps. Protective gear would need to evolve, providing safety while not hindering the player's newfound agility and speed. In this new Martian version of football, we might see moves that are unimaginable on Earth. Players might perform acrobatic feats, defying gravity with every leap and stride. It would undoubtedly raise the excitement and spectacle of Martian football to new heights. So while we're still far from kicking a ball around on Mars, it's intriguing to imagine how the beautiful game would evolve in the face of such drastic changes, and who knows, maybe one day we'll see a Martian World Cup that's out of this world. Another factor that we must consider is Mars's thin atmosphere. This seemingly insignificant detail could fundamentally alter how football is played. Mars's atmosphere is about 1% the density of Earth's at sea level. This thin atmosphere has some interesting implications when it comes to moving a football across the field. On Earth, footballers often have to contend with air resistance. When a player kicks a ball, they're not just moving the ball, they're also pushing against the air. This air resistance can slow the ball down and affect its trajectory. But on Mars, this wouldn't be as much of a problem. With less air to push against, the ball would move more freely. Long passes that are challenging on Earth could be executed with relative ease on Mars. A player could kick the ball and watch as it sailed through the thin Martian air, covering vast distances in a fraction of the time it would take on Earth. But it's not just about the ease of long passes. The thin atmosphere could also make for some incredibly powerful shots. Without the air slowing them down, balls could reach incredible speeds. Picture a free kick taken by a player on Mars. The ball would rocket towards the goal, moving so fast it would be a blur. The opposing team's goalie would have a real challenge on their hands, or rather at their fingertips. This isn't to say that the thin atmosphere wouldn't pose its own challenges. Players would need to adjust their techniques to account for the lack of air resistance. Kicks that would send a ball soaring into the stratosphere on Earth may need to be toned down on Mars. So what can we expect from a football match on Mars? Well, with the reduced air resistance, we can anticipate a game filled with long, breathtaking passes and lightning-fast shots. The ball would cut through the thin Martian atmosphere, reaching its destination within a blink of an eye. It's a fascinating prospect, and one that adds an exciting new dimension to the beautiful game. However, we also need to consider the extreme temperatures on Mars. The average temperature is about minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 
or around minus 60 degrees Celsius. These temperatures are far colder than anything we're used to on Earth, and they present a significant challenge for both players and the technology required to play football on Mars. On the field, players would need to be equipped with advanced spacesuits. These wouldn't just be your ordinary football kits. These suits would need to be designed with temperature control systems to protect the players against the extreme cold. Imagine the players stepping onto the Martian pitch, clad in high-tech gear that's more akin to what astronauts wear than what we see footballers sporting on Earth. It's a surreal image, isn't it? But that might just be the reality of Martian football. The suits would need to be robust enough to withstand the harsh Martian environment, yet flexible enough to allow for the physical demands of the game. They would need to be insulated to keep the players warm, but also breathable to prevent overheating during intense matches. And it's not just the players that would need to adapt. The technology used in the game would also need to evolve. The football itself would need to be designed to withstand the cold temperatures. Traditional leather balls might crack or become too hard in the cold, so we might need to look at alternative materials. The goalposts, the pitch markings, the technology used for offside decisions and goal line technology, all of these would need to be designed to operate in Mars extreme temperatures. The technology used in these suits would need to be highly robust and adaptable to ensure the safety and comfort of the players throughout the game. From the players' gear to the equipment used in the matches, everything would need to be reimagined and redesigned for the Martian environment. Yes, there are many challenges to overcome, but with the advancements in technology and our indomitable spirit, who's to say we won't one day witness a thrilling football match on the Red Planet? After all, football isn't just a game. It's a testament to our ability to adapt, innovate, and push the boundaries of what's possible. Lastly, the low atmospheric pressure on Mars might affect both the ball and players differently. You might be wondering, how so? Well, let's delve into this a bit more. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is about 100 times less than on Earth. What does this mean for our beloved game of football? It's all about the bounce. You see, the bounce of a football relies on the pressure inside the ball and the pressure outside it, which is the atmospheric pressure. On Mars, the low atmospheric pressure could mean that the ball behaves in ways that we're not used to. It could bounce higher or lower, or even take a different trajectory mid-air. Picture this. A striker takes a shot at the goal, expecting the ball to curve in a certain way. But the ball, in defiance of the striker's expectations, takes a completely different path, leaving everyone on the field and in the audience baffled. The unpredictability of the ball's behavior could make the game all the more thrilling. But it's not just about the ball. The players too would have to adapt to the low atmospheric pressure. It could affect their breathing, their movements and even their stamina. They'd have to undergo special training to cope with the unique conditions and devise new strategies to outsmart their opponents. It's not just about physical strength and skill anymore, but also about acclimating to the Martian conditions. So you see, the low atmospheric pressure could drastically change the way football is played. It would require players to rethink their techniques and strategize in new and innovative ways. This adjustment would add yet another layer of complexity, strategy, and excitement to the game. Football on Mars wouldn't just be a sport, it would be a spectacle, a testament to human adaptability and the love for the beautiful game. Football in space is still purely hypothetical, but the dream of colonizing Mars brings with it a realm of possibilities and challenges for the future of the beautiful game. From the gravity-defying leaps and acrobatic moves to the long-distance passes slicing through thin Martian air, the game as we know it could be revolutionized. Yet, alongside these thrilling prospects, we must also grapple with the harsh realities of Mars' extreme temperatures and low atmospheric pressure. Players would need to don advanced spacesuits and the game's very dynamics could change with the altered bounce of the ball. These challenges, however, only add to the allure of Martian football. They introduce new layers of complexity, strategy and excitement to the game, promising a spectacle unlike any we've seen before. Only time will tell. But until then, join us in our journey through the mysteries of space. This is Football in Space. How would the game be played on Mars?